Thank you very much. Thank you. Distinguished leaders of our country, colleagues, and most importantly, the family and friends of the 3,400 residents of the Iranian resistance at Camp Ashraf. I'm honored to be here today. I spent this week on Capitol Hill talking with senators, congressmen, and their professional staff. My intent was not strategic. It was tactical. I got to answer those allegations they raised. And I didn't get my information by reading reports. I got my information to answer those allegations, not second and third hand, but I lived it. I experienced it. I saw it, and I was responsible for detaining your loved ones. Well, I was asked first, there's people at Ashraf being held against their will. Let me tell you about being held against your will. Every single person was taken off of Camp Ashraf, interviewed, and given the opportunity to leave. Some did. Not many. Most returned voluntarily. I never found anyone being held against their will, and I tried. At 2 in the morning, I raided billets areas. Never did I find anyone being detained there. Another issue raised on Capitol Hill this week is that there's hidden weapons. And when the Iraqis go in, after they move the Ashraf residents, they're going to pull out and say, look what they were keeping. I trust my soldiers, and my soldiers did a very good job using canine, using all techniques possible, and we searched. I looked for hidden weapons, contraband. Again, we found none. I did find bayonets. They each had a bayonet, and I let them keep them. So I raided those billets, like I said, at 2 in the morning. I never found any indication of torture, anyone being hurt, any hidden weapons, or people being held against their will. I wanted to find it. I wanted to find somebody tied up being beat up to justify why I was having my soldiers detain these people in a desert area in Diyala province and not allowing them to go. And should they try, they would have been shot. There were congressmen and staffers who heard that the people at Ashraf are denied the right to see or speak to their family. Well, let me tell you again, that's not true. Every day, we had family coming from different parts of the world. Some would fly in through the Kurdish region out of Austria. Some would come over from Iran. Some would come up from Baghdad, from around the world. We would search those people, sign them in, and they would go into Camp Ashraf and stay as long as they wanted. Some stayed weeks. A little known piece of information. The MEK, the residents of Ashraf, they ran a hotel on the encampment where the family members could stay. You don't hear that in the news? No, family members came and went. But I'll tell you, since April 2009, I haven't heard of the Iraqis detaining the people at Ashraf, letting any family members in. One of the most surprising revelations, which was raised to me by one of our professional staffers here on the Hill, was pointing a finger at me this past week saying, they will be better off at Liberty because finally they will have telephone access and they're going to have internet access and they can see the rest of the world. You've got to be kidding. They have cell phone access now. They have internet. I pulled my phone out of my pocket and I said, name any one of the leaders at Camp Ashraf and I guarantee you I will have them on the phone in five minutes. And if you just want to talk to a junior member, give me about 15, because they're going to have to go to the billets area and bring them. The staffer was stunned. And I said, seriously, I will call them right now. I've got their phone numbers on my cell phone. The staffer was quiet. Then I said, well, you know, nowadays, people like to use media and all the different type medias. Would you like the Facebook friend? Some of the women at Ashraf, my daughter does. The staffer remained quiet. I think they go to Liberty 
we will see that communication go away, not be giving to them. To say that staffer was stunned is an understatement. Finally, another piece of misinformation that I've heard repetitively this week is that the people of Camp Ashraf are a cult. I have lived with them. I have eaten with them. I was involved with some of the reruns of the Waco Branch Davidian investigation when stationed at Fort Hood as the senior MP a few years ago. I know what cult mentalities are. The people at Ashraf are not a cult. My wife has been an army wife for over 30 years. And I can, she can spot a predator, she can spot a fraud a mile away. Dawn, do you think Marianne Rajavi is a cult leader? No, she is not. I've met her on numerous occasions, and I know her. I want to tell you that I am an Army wife. I've been an Army wife for 32 years, and I love the spouses that I've been given to take care of, male and female. And over the years, the 32 years, I have learned to love and care for these spouses. Marian Rajavi is no different. She loves the people that have been under her care for all these years. Think of what she's going through as she sees the way she's treated over there and she can't get to them to help them. Think of how, I don't know if many know, that surrounding them now, I've seen the pictures, there are loudspeakers blaring in at them right now, and they can't get medical care. Think of how she feels. Does that make her a cult leader to care for these people? And right now, her very own daughter is over there. She is not a cult leader. They are they are very similar to the women suffragettes of our own country. They stand for freedom and democracy. Is she a cult leader? No. She is a caring woman entrusted with the care of 3,400 people that are on her heart night and day. Now that's an army wife. You know who runs my household. Early on in the captivity of the people at Ashraf, I brought back a letter to Madam Morgan Parsi, Commander Zora, Mr. Davari, Bari, many others. As a senior leader up at Ashraf representing the coalition forces, I was honored to present to them a letter stating you are now a protected person under the Fort Geneva Convention and my mission as a commander is to provide for your safety and security. A mission to which this day I feel very serious about. I feel morally responsibility for these people. I believed in what I did that day giving them that promise on behalf of our nation. We promised to protect and defend them not allow them to be left to be slaughtered. What part of the term protected persons do the Iraqis not understand? The residents of Camp Ashraf, they trusted us when we gave them that promise and an assurance of safety. Let's show them the United States stands by its word. Thank you. <laughs>